This is episode 36 of the Podcraft Beer Show for Monday, March 22nd, 2021. Guest host Josh joins us again to try a unique milkshake IPA, an imperial double pastry stout, and a farmhouse ale. <laughs> This is the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. Got your other host, Charlie. Well, hello. We got tech guy, Steve. Hello. And we got a uh, special guest, uh, Josh, uh, with us for the second episode in a row. Right. Oh, bam, he's yeah. back. Yeah, he's yeah. back. You could buy this Patreon seat for $500 <laughs> every week. <laughs> Seats for sale. Dive Seats in, sale. somebody. Wait, does that mean I have to pay next time? <laughs> next time. <laughs> Apparently, it does. <laughs> So today we're going to uh, take a look at a couple of beers. Uh, we're going to we got a, a milkshake IPA from three to uh, be exact from Harlan, Ooh. and then we have a uh, stout collab from Modern Times and Equilibrium, and uh, we're going to wrap it up with uh, a saison from Cellar Maker. Yummy! What do you think of them apples? That sounds great. I like them. Hopefully, sounds there's fantastic. no apples in them. I love Harlan. So our first beer, as Steve mentioned, Harlan. Steve is going to get. He's going to be shocked by the color of this. Oh my gosh, it's green. It is. It's a I. It's slime from. Uh, is it Slimer Sli- from Ghostbusters? Dude, it's got a. <laughs> it's got a really particular smell that is. It's it's almost like vanilla and 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 cream together. So do, do we know what makes so it the the green? first beer it's real a- quick? It's uh, Buku Pandan Milkshake IPA. Uh, this is the next in uh, Harlan's. Uh, dessert milkshake IPAs. Uh, they brewed this in collaboration with Mostra Coffee and the Mostra Experience. Uh, this beer is in, uh, inspired by the classic Filipino dessert. It features lactose, toasted coconut, pandan leaves uh, uh, to present liquid coconut, cake batter. Uh, so that's that's what they, they look batter, for. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, originally this was made um, batch. This is batch two. Batch one was released in. Um, they, they actually brought the Moster Experience members in and, and had them like processing the hmm. pan dam. So mm-hmm. these guys are playing chef. Uh, batch one probably had some Moster member fingers in it. Ooh. <laughs> they had them all, like all chopping up the pan dam, throwing in the stuff. So um, and this was this was uh, number two. Yeah. And what was that other one we had when we were there, that red one? Uh, so so th- the ube, the ube yeah, milkshake. Ube. So it was purple. I like that one better. But this smells a lot better today. So that they, was early. Oh no! Uh, so so Mostra, uh, like Charlie was mentioning, we we had stopped to uh, uh, we had these last weekend. Super unique. Harlan and, and Mostra just got their um, uh, their their beer license, beer and wine license. Yep. They the the first event they did was with Harlan. Uh, they had uh, B batch one, batch two of this Buku Pandam, as well as the Ube milkshake. Well, they for also you had members. they also had two beer release bottle releases um, previous to this event where they had the uh, pandam and uh, i went up there for, well you and i went for one and gosh you got a free cup of coffee so that was almost like you know well worth the trip you know i'll uh, i'll get up early for a free cup of coffee <laughs> and then we uh we grabbed three or four bottles there and then the next one they released some more so we got another bottle and uh we'll uh we'll pop those at some point on this show you know let them set for a while I, i'm looking to see what a pandam Looks like, uh huh, yeah. Okay, it's um makes sense now. It's a it's definitely planty. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a little sweetness to it. I don't know if that's probably come from the coconut or the. It's got a down. creamy flavor to yeah. it. I think it's got with the lactose will cream it up a little yeah. bit. It's not bad. It's just you. Uh, it's different. obviously when you see it, you're gonna when you drink it, you're not gonna think, oh, I'm drinking a an IPA. Well, you know, let's, let's right, talk right. to the expert here, Steve. What do you think? I'm not a fan. <laughs> not, yeah, it's kind of it's it's, no. it's yeah. I, I am definitely about trying and and drinking anything and anything that's brewed and right. fermented. So, uh, I'm I'm not opposed to it. I'm yeah, not, I'm not like I don't think I'm gonna like it's, rush out to tell people like, oh, dude, you got to try this beer. However, it's a very interesting idea. It is. It's I, unique. I, I like I like the idea. So the yeah. the color is amazing, right? Like I mean, it's it's, it's so bright, bright, like it's uh like almost like a neon green, right? right? Like an like the, well, didn't we have a creative creature? That uh, spri- but that was, yeah, it was yeah, made it was with that that green. spirillo or yeah. that algae. Yeah, the, the algae, right? The algae, yeah. uh, high C uh, ectogather or whatever, like the. Mm-hmm. Now that one was a good beer. 
So the yeah, that was a sour, and that that had a very similar color, right? So this is using like the color on this just amazes me, and the mouth feel, like and how you look at it, and I expect it to have a, a taste like that sour, like to have some sour aspects, like, like Kool Aidy, right? Yeah, right, and it's bit. not the case, right? Like it is more like a. No, if you were, go ahead. I, I was gonna say I like the actual initial flavor of it. I think where it like gets a little weird for me is the I mean, the grassy aftertaste, like, right? That's. Mm. It's like, yeah, I feel I like I, mowed, I, like. That, I feel like I mowed my lawns in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, like I, um, I mean, I, like Lucky Charms milk or something on the back, mm. like super sugary cereal milk. I think mm-hmm. it, it's really sweet. I think right. on, the, on the back yeah. end of it, I and I, it's it's just like there's this lingering in the back. Like it's like if that wasn't there, I think yeah. I'd like it a lot more. Um, because I I want to keep drinking it because I want that initial taste again. Yeah, right. But as it clean the palate cleanses, I'm like. Ugh. That was, that was a little weird, but I liked that first. So I, you know, last night I had um, the wetsuit dreams that you gave me from Humble, oh yeah Humble Sea. Um, not to keep plugging Humble Sea, but they keep putting out great beers. Yeah, um, the, there, it's a foggy pale ale, so it's a single hop uh, mosaic with a pinch of a lactose in it. Uh huh. And that lactose just made that so yeah so amazingly smooth and easy yeah. to drink. That's the I, you know. It can't be vegan if it's got mm. lactose in it, but I do like that slight lactose content in a hazy. It just it smooths them out so much, and just and it that's they, what it does to this one too. Yeah, they like, do get that pillowy. Yeah, if it didn't have that, this might be almost under. Come on, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it gives it that yeah. creamy. Yeah, tastes like a salad. You know, <laughs> tastes like it a does. plant. Right? Yeah, You're I, like, I'm yeah. actually I'm sitting here drinking and like, well, what if they take the pandan out? How would this taste? It might be pretty ridiculously good. <laughs> right. You never know, right. but I mean, uh, t- to be honest with you, the first batch we tasted the first batch and the second batch, and then that red one. I like the red one the best, but this is is that ube milkshake. This, no yeah, this mm-hmm. second batch was better than the first batch okay. in my per- and that was over time. So sure, that was six probably six months ago. The the batch one came out. Um, so yeah, super cool. Like you know the uh, you got to you got to give it up to. Uh, I think a lot of that's Mike uh, up there, uh, the lab yeah, dining at, at Mostra. Good job. Um, you know he's kind of the I think the brains behind that whole collab piece, or you know bringing this up. Uh, uh, him being a chef, I think uh, I played quite a bit, and and just trying to bring this to life. Yeah. Every one of those guys are really uh, them and their wives are very very nice, super and kind, talented. You know? Yeah, they and know I, what they're doing. I would say too, like I I do love this like idea of let's take you know desserts we eat or foods we eat and make them beers, and so I, I always like to tr- to see that you know. So it's yep. like experimenting with something like this to see what comes of it. I'm totally in for it. Yeah. I mean. You know, hey, I, I kind of hope they do it again, and it, you know, it balances out a little better, and maybe they figure out some way to kind of get that, you know, for me, the aftertaste to go away because I do, like I said, that first taste of it was actually delightful, yeah. and then it was as it like fell off the tongue, it kind of got weird for me. <laughs> well, but. we sat down up there, and and as a matter of fact, we met up with uh, the brewer from Harlan, Nick, Nick yeah. and we discussed his IPA you know how delicious that mm-hmm. was and uh the fact that uh we they gave you food they gave us you know, three tasters of this pandam and the uh I, can't, I, I still can't remember the name ube. Ube. ube and then uh we ordered up some some hazies and a stout they had available there too that was pretty good but uh they had this chicken sandwich that was phenomenal i mean a spicy uh chicken sandwich yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. So we we ate up and enjoyed ourselves at that one. So speaking of enjoying ourselves, what's in your hands there, Charlie? A stout, uh, Silence of Light. This is uh, Equilibrium collaboration with Modern Times. Let's say here is Imperial Stout with dark chocolate and pistachios added, and it's only thirteen percent alcohol. So mm-hmm. it's, drink up. It's a little lighter than normal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it just says a small can too. Oh gosh, it smells terrible. Yeah, so the the, the write up on this just talks about the the results of a meticulous and highly coordinated spell work with our friends at Equilibrium. This thirteen percent liquid wonder kind is an imperial stout of the highest order, packed with pistachios, cocoa, vanilla. At its opaque depths, are host to a glorious abundance of des- dessert flavors that are virtually guaranteed to inspire a few extremely leisurely moments, accompanied by 
contented we're, sighs of appreciation. We're rocking at 58 degrees right now. Is that what it is, Charlie? Yeah. That's, that's what I tested mine that's at. That's a perfect temp for this beer, too. So and as it warms up, it'll still get even better, I'm sure. Yeah. But I haven't tasted it yet. I'm waiting for Chris to get his dose, his yep. proper dose. <laughs> Steve's, Steve's taking all kinds of pictures. He's not only getting his camera out, he's getting his phone out. Smells delightful. Very mild on the nose. I, I will tell you, I, this is one of my favorite packaging sizes. Oh, the 12 ounce. For, it's a 12 ounce stout. I was and, talking about that yesterday with uh, my buddy Steve. And uh, not Steve, Tech Steve. Gold Camp brochure Steve. Uh, he has a neighbor and we were over there and that's the guy I told you has the big bottle of those. And, uh, he says, Oh, well, you know, if it's just me and you, we'll crack open this uh, 12 ounce can. And I, I said, isn't that the perfect size for two people? And he goes, absolutely. Yeah. It is. Well, I'll tell you my little stories. My wife now goes, Hey, are we going to split a stout tonight? And I'm like, Oh man, what happened? <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's, um, Ooh. you know, I, I love that that twelve ounce can uh, as well. Uh, actually, um, I think favorite beer that I had this week uh, was was that uh, Mexican vanilla as a Beastmaster when they yeah. did the the four different vanillas. Yes, um, yes, which was awesome. That yeah, was well, awesome. and it like to me, it's just like you know, you you when you crack a twenty two bottle, like that's a commitment. Yeah, right. It's a big commitment. That's a I party. Mean, I. The nice thing about the 12 ounce can, I can make it a long night by myself or a shorter night with one other person and make it, you know, kind of enjoy it and move on. But it's, uh, it's been my favorite. I've been scooping these up as often as possible. No, they're great. I think, you know, the, uh, pre pandemic, uh, it was, it was easy for a guy like me to get his hands on a couple of vanilla, uh, um, gosh, I want to say months. It's that, Oh, Not the Devil's Monst- Keys, but uh, Monsters, Monsters Park. Park. Monsters Park, vanilla, yeah. cans, 12-ounce yeah. cans is like the greatest invention ever. It's a phenomenal stout. It's in 12 ounces. Yeah, I mean, three years ago or two years ago, it was in Bombers. So you had Nothing to yeah. commit to 22 ounces. ounces. Well, well, here's, I mean, just, just a little story behind that can. At 15%. Specifically, the last, you know, being a theory member, the last time, for modern times, last time they released that, it, it, they was said jokingly, but it actually came to fruition. Well, I think we could get uh, 24 or 48 cans. And the the number of cans, if every League me- Theory member bought out their max, it wouldn't make it to League. And, well, you, th- you, you know. There was a lot of really pissed off yeah, people. Yeah, a lot of pissed off people. So they, they've definitely changed their you protocol. The peasants were The peasants unrested. did not <laughs> see. They, even, when you even, had League members... That weren't able to get this beer. I would right. say the nobles were left out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was no, only the lords that. Got the right, beer. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, because and that stuff is like sixteen bucks a can, but it's phenomenal. It's like it's at sixteen dollars yeah. a can. It's one of the best uh, best deals that you'll find. Well, and I think. here's the thing: like, it's really easy for me on a a night to crack open a sixteen can sixteen dollar can or a thirty four dollar bottle, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you, I here's the I know this is just basic logistics. It's a lot easier to stack cans mm. in my fridge than it is to stack bottles. I can store a lot more cans than bottles, and so I have no. What are you talking about? No, I'm just saying. It's just <laughs> these are just it's, facts. It's not easy either way. Oh no, it's easier. They no, stack, no, I can stack them like five high in my fridge. It's it's okay. It works. You're gonna have to disagree. <laughs> so give us your breakdown on that, uh, Josh. That that beer there. Oh. What do you think of that? Uh, it is um, not barrel aged, which I'm okay with. I, I, you know, I do like the barrel aged stuff. I do like that, but there's times when you don't want that over alcoholic, heavy, you know, like almost woody. Yeah, it, effervescent. You know, like as you drink it, kind of like goes through your whole nostrils and stuff. It's definitely like a dessert to it, me. Like this is like, you know, after dinner, that? I don't need a piece of cheesecake or a piece Super of pie. Drinkable. I just I split this with my wife, and I'm like. It's a night capper. That's I was going to say the same thing. Really sweet, like mm-hmm. a dessert. Like yep. this would be a really good beer, like at the yeah, end of dinner. There's still chocolate on the back. It's of this. Super, yep. a lot so of chocolate, chocolate. And almost like liqueur mm-hmm. Like yeah, I think like a- And I, 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 pistachios, right? Which mm-hmm. is, it's one of my favorite adjuncts 
I d- uh, for nut as you know, if you're gonna go nuts, it's <laughs> pistachios would be my favorite nut. That sounds weird to Not say. A bad nut, to crack. Um, but I do like it. And I think is it dark chocolate or regular chocolate? In this one, I it can't says remember. Chocolate, I think. It says chocolate. No, it's dark chocolate. Dark right? chocolate, which I to me that's like holy cow, dark chocolate and pistachios. I'm gonna just like I'm gonna enjoy this. I you know I'm almost out of them, and I'm like going back and hoping they have some more just so I can stock the fridge again. So that's a good call. Good bring. Yeah. And, and they're, I, I think, I think that's a $10 one, like nine seventy five or something like that. So it's totally approachable for like an average person can walk down there, grab a can of that. It's available. Yeah. Too. And you could buy it per can. You're like, you're not committing to a four pack. You're not committing to anything other than a can. I, I do like their, um, you know, anybody that, uh, I mean, if you've been to, to modern times, um, you can go in and, and usually that top shelf is all 12 ounce cans of stouts that you can pick and choose, right? Like they have these and they're best in San Diego as far as like repeatedly putting out stouts that are super high quality. You can drink on like a Tuesday night, you know, but like they're, I mean, they're great. Yeah. Nothing against, like you know, other breweries, but like Bottle Logic, the brewery, like stouts that we've all had that yeah. have been like great. I, I just think the consistency and the variety from from modern times has has been pretty fun to experience. I would say that for like, sure. I'm gonna have to agree. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the best it, part about it. Is, I mean, like I haven't even had it, but they came out with a uh, pecan pie one that yeah. I was gonna pass on him. Like my wife's like, "Hey, you gotta get that," you know. And so I'm like, "Okay," you know. Now, I mean, they're making stuff good. So I mean, my wife who's not a beer drinker. Oh, what is now drinking? stouts on a regular basis which uh, I, I think i've dropped off more beer there for her than you that's, that's <laughs> probably true now at some point yeah i i like that she's appreciative so the uh um me and steve mentioned the beers that we had had this i have week. one more too oh what else you got? go ahead oh wait no, we're going go. for more than one no because i just he just mentioned it in passing because it was the lactose thing but since josh is here um we i had i had a, a mexican lager Love a Mexican Yummy. lager. Um, from Catch Brewing. It's called Altamar, a Mexican-style amber lager. It's very good. Uh, where are they from? Catch Brewing. But I'm not sure where they're from. Where'd you pick that up at? It was at Fraser Farms. I like that place. How's their beer selection over there? I heard it's, it's pretty good. I really good. I've been I, 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 I was yet. happy. Was it Catch 22 or? Catch Brewing. K-E-T-C-H. Okay. K-E-T. And it was called Altamar. Mexican style amber lager. So they're local here. Yeah. Oh, they are. I think you just hit me up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You sent me a text, I think, right? You sent a text in our group chat. No. Is that the? Mm-hmm. Not me. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think I've heard stuff of it. Up now. But... Yeah, I'm just over here yeah. making things up. But that's right. I also got the topa topa. Okay. Last week. So I'm gonna. Mine was I uh, decided to go down to a Burning Beard because you know mm. that's a great local watering hole. <laughs> <clears throat> Plus, I know people, you know. Uh, so uh, we were down there, and uh, they had a new uh, Imperial Double New Englander um, that might be one of my favorite hazies that they've come out. It's called Piper at the Gates of Fog. Wait. It, I'm, I'm, it's, it, it's like it's, um, it's, it's Daddy's mimosa. Like that's how juicy that thing wow. was. It was. I couldn't. I drank that thing so fast it was i mm. it was a Do little embarrassing no it's only tap only oh, really tap well, only for now i i, I fully I expect think they're gonna can that. i fully that. expect this to be in the next well, what's round the other of one they, had? they had another new or newer newer they did. one and i think uh, i'm gonna be really bad at this but they came out because I was down at Valley Farms and they yeah. had it, and I just can't remember the name. Oh, of it. that was Dreamer Deceiver. Yeah, Dreamer they just can, they just can that. Mm-hmm. This one, and if I'm I'm you know, if next time we get together, I'll have the deets on this. But they uh, brewed two brewed, brewed two different beers using similar uh, ingredients, but different processes and different. I think it was different yeasts. Yeast. Right? Yeah. 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 And so they're just kind of, you know, a little, exp- and I, you know, I don't mind as, as a home brewer, I used to do that where I, I you know, I'd make a, a 10 gallon batch and ferment one with one yeast and ferment, you know, do yeah, five gallons. Yeah, just because you forgot. Yeah. <laughs> well, or I didn't have enough yeah. of one yeast. Uh, <laughs> You know, hey, whatever you got to do. Yeah, right? it worked. Can't, can't let non-fermented beer I think go we're going to gonna waste. review his beers next week. 
The ones that are uh, not no longer ex- are no longer existent. I have them in bottles. You have my beer in bottles still. Yes, yes. Oh man, that's dangerous. I bet you they're aged properly. Oh no. <laughs> Hey, so that catch looks like a, a pretty unique little spot down there. We're gonna, Where's it at? Where's that? Where's that? Uh, they got they got one of them. It says um, so catch grill and taps. I'm assuming that's it. Oh, we have created a modern delicious. tavern with a high vibe that pays homage to. Um, it's with, uh, maybe, yeah. So they're. Um, it looks like they're on Shelter Island, hmm. affiliated with the Brigantine. Nice, really. Mm. Oh, I think okay. Now that this is kind of ringing a bell, the Brigantine I know was going into brewing well, that's it that makes right sense then okay huh. that's called catch I, i'll definitely swoop. they got the best yeah. taco, yeah. fish tacos in yeah. town oh, for sure by well, far that, that's gonna be on the way home then so i, I can just there you go <laughs> see that's <laughs> it is you're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to swing in there yeah verify they have the best yeah, fish yeah. tacos and mm-hmm. uh, mexican lagers yeah that's that's pretty fun so that it was you got that canned or on, on tap? can can Six at Fraser Farms, right? At Fraser Farms. Okay. Is it individual? Do they have individuals so, over there? Or do you guys had to buy? They have six? some big, bigger ones, but yeah. I don't think they let you just pull things off and build your yeah. own. Four pack, six pack. It was six pack. Okay. Twelve, 12 ounce, sixteen. Twelve ounce. Twelve ounce. Yeah. Good call. Are you ready, boys? We got one more to roll. <sighs> Look, Chris, he's he's starting to fade. Oh my goodness. Whew. That is a funky smelling beer. So, Charlie, how long have you had this bottle? I couldn't tell you. It's been a while. Tropical Impressions, Barrel Aid Saison, or Session, whatever you want to call it, with guava and passion fruit. I'm a, I'm a, that's another style that I'm a big fan of is Saisons. I, uh, I just like that earthiness it brings. Well, it doesn't smell like a fart in a bottle, but <laughs> it's, I can make it smell it's like a fart in a bottle. It's got some funk to it, though. It's got, yeah. <laughs> just breathe into it. <laughs> That'll work. You better sit and pour before you run and it smells good. Yeah. That smells passion fruit come or gua- I, that it's guava. It's guava, guava. I'm a big fan of guava. Guava is a very important ingredient in any beer, I think. So remember, Chris is here, so you got to save him a drop. Mm. He doesn't like Saison, so. No, he doesn't like anything. Woo! That smells. Funky, monkey. That, that's why we saved this one for last. If yeah. we would have had this one before the stout, we would have. It yeah, that erect your palate, Woo. and it's it just keeps going. So they're they're right up on the saison is uh, like the fruit. Up my nose, <laughs> like the fruit stands of Hawaii. Tropical impressions is loaded with gra- guava and passion fruit. Oh, beer makers hey, celebrate their judiciously. Nose, Charlie uh, selected three oak barrels of brightly aromatic uh, mixed culture saisons that will uh, accompany the fruit that we used, as crushable as they come. <laughs> I don't care how long I had it. It's good. No, that is, <laughs> that is, this is, for, okay, so. Uh, wow. Dude. I, dude. That's good. That's really good <laughs> you, know, you know what this is making me Jones for? Funk. Yeah. Festival of Funk. Festival of Funk. I'm, Bring uh, it on. I, uh, oh man, Char- that is so stinking good. Uh, mm. It's it's not overly, overly acidic. It's perfectly balanced. I. I actually like the saison as a, a a funk more than I do like an ale as a funk. I think the saison is a little bit better of a blender. I like it. Oh, that fruit's delightful. Those yeah, two it's a great like together. it's um kind of a hazy orange. Looks like a like a hazy IPA mm. almost when you saison saisons are typically a hazy beer. I mean, well, if you this ever, looks it, like it looks like the Ferris Falcon more than it looks like a hazy. It doesn't look like orange juice or oh, something. Sure. I mean, hey guys, the bottle's gone by the way. Just Dang letting it. you know, there's nothing left in it. Oh, I think I got three more. <laughs> plus for me. Do, do you really? <laughs> it's a possibility. Oh, man. <laughs> I may have to fish and hunt for fish and oh, wow, A lot pack. of guava in there, huh? Yep. Guava. That is. Oh, man. Okay. I'm, I haven't had a sour in a while. Mm-mm. I just I just have it because, you know, it's cold out. You know, I typically leave those for like Baby, late it's spring. Cold Get outside. those outside. Summertime. This is. You've been stouting up. Yeah. It's, yeah, we're throwing the clock forward. We're going to fruited yeah, sours. It's definitely time for daylight savings. Also, yeah. holy cow, that is yeah, that's really good. Well like, done, seller. Like good not, job. Not overly acidic. How long have you had that, Charlie? What's the date on that bottle? Did you see uh, anything I was, on there? I was looking for a date, and I don't see. Let me find it. No, pro- probably not. There's nothing on the bottle, so. We and can so look. I'm looking. I'm looking here. I haven't had this. What's uh, the first che- earliest check in on? Um, that? yeah, like 2018. So it's a two-year-old bottle. 
Oh. Yeah, like spring of 2018. So coming up on three years. Perfect timing. So I, that's that's one thing. I, one thing I like about sours is um, if they're if you ever had one that's you got a couple bottles of the same stuff. And you're like, oh, it's a little acidic. I don't know. I, it'll change. Just it wait. always changes. Just wait. Yeah, and so sometimes it'll get more sour. But in this case, I think we hit the nail on the, the time head there. on. Oh man, that is so. It's to me, it's just beautifully balanced with the acidity yeah. and the, the sweetness of the juice. Oh, mm. Does I'm glad I poured it up my nose. What do you think, mm. Steve? I like the fruit at the end. Yeah, it's, little. It's what hard, do you think of the fruit going down? It's a little tart, but it's that's a perfect tartness. Mm-hmm. I think. But I think, I think Josh is onto something. If it was like a really warm right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Sandy oh yeah, if it was summer, this yeah. would be the beer to yeah. drink right now. But I always see that, like, uh, you know, like a, a Berliners in the summertime. Like, oh, Steve, we're setting right. a trend, dude. It's that's what we're doing. It's like, <laughs> I, I mean, I I have a keg of order of Hermes in my fridge that I haven't cracked yet. Hermes or Herms? Her, it's her, you know they say Hermes. I, I don't say like Herms. the way they say it. I know. I think it's order of Herms too, but you know, uh, potato, potato. <laughs> uh, but. It, it's I'm like, or I've, I've been like holding <laughs> off tapping that keg because I do know like as soon as we get you know it was at the uh, the equinox is in like a week or two yeah. as soon as the days get longer than the nights it's gonna get stronger oh it's there's nothing better than a nice little Berliner tardy something I got, in the afternoon. I got a couple of cans of that in there do you really yes which batch mm, probably the first and second <laughs> <laughs> At least the second. I know that. That's really good. No, yeah, that was phenomenal. I'm a huge fan of a uh, of a saison. So like that that oak barrel age. You, you certainly taste a little bit of barrel on there. The the color is uh is great. Like a, like a hazy orange. Um, like you said not not overly acidic. Uh, good barrel characteristics, and the fruit still comes through really really well. I believe. Delish. Do the bear, beers from um, Cellar Maker usually sell out right away, or can you go they, in there and just you can you can do a couple of things. They um so you can actually order um to deliver down here mm-hmm. in San Diego, right? Mm-hmm. So they um they they will do that, but not not all of them. I mean, some of their beers certainly do, but not all of their uh um you. I mean, you can jump online, mm-hmm. get a get a pretty decent wide variety. Usually, like um saison, like they they don't sell out, right? Mm-hmm. Like like a like a barrel aged saison isn't like a adjunct stout, right, right, right. right? Like a pastry, super thick pastry mm-hmm. stout or whatever. You, you don't know? have people to rush just, to get those. Yeah, like people <laughs> they just don't dive on them like mm-hmm. they do the the other ones. Yeah, the um, mo- you know, yeah, monster, monster tones, tones or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or what know? is it? Uh, Monster's teeth is coming out. Oh this right, week. yeah. Another, I mean, phenomenal beer. Yeah. Mash up between uh, Monster Park and Devil's, Devil's Teeth. Teeth. Yeah, great beers. Yeah, but I, the, use, I, uh, yeah, I, um, I do think I, I do think the sour is an acquired taste variant of beers. I don't, I think a lot of people, like people eat them, or, you know, taste them like oh, vinegary, and well, yeah, I get sure. that. But did you, but did the, you hear the first show that we did <laughs> with Steve? He's like, no, I don't drink stouts or sours. What does he drink now? Stouts, go. sours. It's a tough job. Yeah, it somebody's got to do it. Those yeah, things. somebody's got to drink them. I like it. it. So there's a uh, another show, guys. The uh, so so we uh, we started off with that Buku Pandam, uh, the the Harlan and Mostra Experience uh, mm. beer. Uh, we rolled to the to the Stout from Equilibrium and and Modern Times, and then finished up with the Cellar Maker Saison. What did you guys, uh, Josh, guest? Would you? Uh, what was your favorite? You know, I think God. Well, it's definitely between the stout and the saison, but I think it's I right now this saison is hitting right for me. I just like I think it's just it's been a while since I've had one, mm-hmm. and I've had a sour, um, and I've been drinking stouts like crazy. So you know, but this is uh, it's just good. I, yeah, I really enjoy it. Steve, what yeah, do you think? The stout. You like the, the stout? The dark chocolate. And the yeah, taste and and the, I like the the twelve ounce can just for all the reasons you guys mentioned it because mm-hmm. like I. There's nobody else in my house who's going to drink a stout with me. Right. You're on, on your own. Bandwagon. You're on your own. I love it. I love it. He's jumping on the bandwagon. How about you, Charlie? What was your... Uh... I'm going to go with that uh, Cellar Maker. That mm. was, that's a pleasant surprise. You on the Saison? Yeah. Yeah. The I would say the... Uh, I'd had the, the Buku Pandam last week. I think it's phenomenal. I really like what... you know. I love that mildness it's of it. It's another little... little uh, you know, I could do uh, eight ounces of it. Um, 
the stout was great, but it's modern times. You know, the uh, it's kind of par for the course. I'd say that uh, that saison, the the fruit that came through, um, it was super phenomenal. I could I could definitely sit outside in the sun and uh, like you said, you know, it's warming up. Hit that for a little while. There it is. Yeah. Josh, uh, thanks for joining us yeah. again. And thanks for uh, having me. I hope to have you in the, in the future. Yeah, bring more beer next time. <laughs> you know, I asked Chris how many beers you guys do, and he said six. And I was like, well. He's a liar. You know, <laughs> so I, I, I brought one because I didn't want to over. Well, we're going to have yeah. to do after party. I over so, promise. Well, once delivered. we shut it down, we'll we'll talk uh, next week about the after party. Cheers. I'm Wait, I'm heading out to uh, Outer Range and Casey. Well, what? I guess we'll, we'll look at some of that for our next show. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback and to connect with us on social media. In closing, please continue to recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only. And compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.